Welcome to the Church Solutions Podcast, brought to you by JSL Solutions. The Church Solutions Podcast is designed to help equip you and your church in the use of technology and other tools and services. And now, here are your hosts, Steve Lacey and Phil Thompson. Greetings, folks, and welcome to another edition of the Church Solutions Podcast. That is correct. I got it right this time. Last week, I couldn't remember what we what we call ourselves. <laughs> we call ourselves Church Solutions Podcast, and uh, my name is Phil Thompson. Hi, and I'm Steve Lacey. We're with the company JSL Solutions. We do mobile apps. We do streaming video. We do websites, all that good stuff. And we like to talk about things that can help your church, help you and your church. A lot of it's tech stuff. Some of it's not tech related. Just kind of depends on, you know, what we're in the mood for. Right. Right now I'm in the mood to get out of your home office here. (laughs) So I'm over here at Steve. Steve actually has an office out of his house and he has a cat that uh, comes around here. And and normally I do pretty good with your cat. I would say my wife has a cat. (laughs) All right. So your wife has a cat. You're going to blame it on her. And uh, I I have had some issues with some cats in the past where I kind of get allergy issues with them. And I think maybe I've had some issues with yours before, but today it's a major problem for me. <laughs> Must be because it's raining. Well, I, and I think it's raining, and I don't think your air conditioning's cranking like usual. Yeah. And I think that's something that's bothering my eyes. So so I can barely see my notes here. <laughs> But anyhow, we will we'll move on with my problems uh, later. So, Steve, what are we going to talk about today? So, today we're talking about three ways your church uh, to improve your church's giving page. Three ways to improve your church's giving page. Now, we have talked about online giving before here, but we're going to kind of give you some information here that I think will enhance uh, what you're trying to do here. So, uh, you know, most churches. If they're on top of things at all, they're going to put a link on their website somewhere for whatever service they use to give online. Right. It could be PayPal. There's a number of yeah. There is a number. We're, I guess we're not going to get into the pros and cons or, or recommend any particular no. one no, as so. we go through this. But there, everybody has theirs. Typically, they'll give you some enco- some code to embed on your page, and it creates a, a, a giving button that takes the the person to the area where they can have a secure uh, enter their credit card and enter, enter amounts and that sort of thing. Yeah, that's right. And and we encourage you to put that on as many pages as possible. You really and we've said this before in the past. You, you should make that you know very visible for people. You know that when they go to your website or or even on, if you're doing streaming video, you know we have a streamingchurch.tv platform and you can put that on there. And, and all that good stuff is, is certainly important to do because people more and more are giving online today. My church uses an app that we produce and uh, people are using the app to give online, you know, mm-hmm. so it, it really it really does help. But uh, today we want to go the next further, an- another step on that. And that is, uh, you know, when somebody visits your your website, your page, and they're thinking about giving, uh, chances are they probably have, you know, a few questions that they're asking. Uh, and so what we want to approach you on today is, you know, what, what, what might happen if you spend a little bit of time kind of re, revamping your giving page? Now, I realize there's buttons probably, at least I would think you might want to have some opportunities to give on multiple pages, but you might have one specific giving page. All right. You could set it up where you've got maybe a, a donate button on every page, but it mm-hmm. takes the person to your giving page. Yeah, you could do that. Right. Yeah, I think it's good. So here are three ways that you could improve uh, your church's giving page and, and hopefully see some better results. So uh, number one. So number one, show how their giving helps the community and the mission of the church. You know, uh, what you can do here, is, and people are probably asking, you know, if they're, if they're newer people maybe or even if they're not newer people to your church, you might be thinking, okay, I'm giving, but what's where's my money going? And by the way, what difference does it make? And so – People, especially today, tend to feel like you know they're they're more interested in what's going on, how my money's being used, the mission, the purpose, and all that. So, uh, when you just don't have anything, if it's just a nameless deal, a faceless cause, uh, you, you can or some- yeah, or if it's just like you said, just generic, give to our church. Right. Yeah. 
So we would encourage you to possibly consider putting some photos, some pictures uh, on maybe some of the outreach ministries you're doing. Uh, maybe even uh, some quotes from some people who have They've been helped by the giving or yeah. Yeah. Their lives have been changed maybe by the church too. It, it doesn't necessarily that you're, you know, I mean, we certainly maybe have a benevolence fund, but I'm thinking more people that are, that uh, just that some are, lives that are changed yeah. just because the church is there and operating. You mean? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Uh, maybe stuff, if you're doing some stuff for your youth, your youth group and, and the money, some of the money is going to help, you know, improve your youth or, or maybe, uh, you know, some community outreaches that you're doing, mm -hmm. uh, those kind of things. And, and really people give, uh, here's what I have found and, and people will give if you have a need, but I have found that people seem to be more responsive. They give more towards vision. Uh, and so if, if they can understand the vision of your church yeah, or, a, or a cause that they can relate to, some details that they can buy into and say, I my, you know, my heart's committed to this ministry yeah. and my wallet's going to be open for, for that. If, and there's lots of people that teach us today. I think I heard John Maxwell teach it 20 years ago. And that was, there are different pockets within your church. And, and so there are people that you have faithful people that give, you know, your church teaches tithing and, and they, they're going to give as much as they can or they tithe. But then there are people, there are other passions that people have uh, that they'll give extra towards, or mm -hmm. maybe there's maybe some people coming to your church that aren't giving hardly anything, but if they have a, if they see something that, that ignites a passion in their heart, uh, and it could be something as simply as, as revamping your sound system, you know, and letting people know there's a need for that and, and, and showing them what you're doing, you know, maybe with streaming video for that matter. Right. Uh, people will, will might get excited about that and give towards that. Right. So pictures, uh, descriptions, testimonies, you know, we're talking authentic things here, real things that are right. happening. And don't just make something up and manufacture something. <laughs> you know, people are going to know that's phony or whatever. Right. So, uh, but really, you know, communicating how giving directly affects the lives. So how, yeah, how it's changed lives and, right. and yeah, you just want to be able to cast the vision and show that the church is working and, uh, the yeah. community is prospering because yeah, of it. Exactly. So, so again, more than just what we're talking about here is, is, is putting something there more than just there's the button give because you should give. It's the right thing to do. Well, yes, it's the right thing to do, but, uh, you know, yeah. stimulate some people. Yeah. We're, we're talking today about your church's giving page, but there's systems out there that are bigger than processes that are, that are in place that have worked at other ministries. I know at our church, we had used the Nelson Searcy, Mm -hmm. method and it, it has to do more around process than it does you know your giving page yeah. it, the what one thing that ties into it is make the giving very convenient mm -hmm. so um one way to do that is having you know they can give online right so there's other ways to make it convenient as well but nelson searcy talks about a larger process about how to treat first-time givers how to treat extravagant givers and that sort of thing yeah. Yeah, I remember I was I was in on that when I was on staff at, at your church, and and actually I used some of his material on my own church when I was pastoring in Kansas. And it's good material, it really is, and there's some good stuff that uh, we could probably talk about that in another podcast. There are some actually some good things to consider, right? Yeah, uh, doing so. All right, so uh, so so anyhow, we're talking about three ways to improve your church's giving page. Uh, so you can see better results. So again, we're talking about not just sticking a button on there, you know, but, but also putting pictures and some of these things we just talked about, uh, showing how giving helps your community helps your, the mission of the church, the vision of the church. The other thing is, is the second point is what? So it's show how responsible your church is. Yeah. This, this actually, you know, we live in a very cynical age and it's, it just seems like it's getting worse and worse. And so a lot of people, uh, they're just leery and, and, uh, of giving, and you might be surprised. I mean, we're not just talking newer people in your church. There may be some people who have been coming for a long time. They may be just a little leery about giving to a church because they're unsure of, you know, how's the finances being handled? How's it being, you know? And so I think it's, I really think it's important to consider, you know, showing how responsible your right. ministry is. Yeah. So there's, you know, the bigger element of this is that, you know, it's all God's money and mm -hmm. assets and we're just managers of it. Mm -hmm. And so giving is, is a part of how you manage your money, 
but the church needs to show that they're a good steward mm -hmm. of the money that flows their way as well. Yeah. So there were some ideas that, that, um, you know, that you can help communicate that with um, possibly just you know, setting, making the people that are giving more aware of kind of the, the systems or structure that you have in place within the church to, yeah. um, you know, set salaries and establish accountability mm -hmm. and um, make sure there's checks and balances in place yep. so that, you know, there's not a... Uh, you know, a, pa and a pastor that says, oh, I want to go do this. Let's go spend money on this. Right. There's some others in there that are kind of helping counterbalance all the needs and priorities of the church. So you might want to put maybe a link to that. I mean, some of the stuff we're talking about, it, it may not all fit on the giving page, but you might want to have a link on the giving page where if people want to know a little bit more about how your accountability factor is there, how, you know, how your checks and balances work. Uh, maybe put a link on the giving page and saying, you know what, at our at, at our church, we believe in personal responsibility. We believe in accountability. Uh, hopefully, your church does. And maybe then, you know, if you'd like to learn more about yeah. how we manage our funds and what we do, click on this link here. You right. Know. And there's, you know, it could take you to the church's bylaws mm -hmm. or, yeah. or some actually some very dry, <laughs> could be very, some very dry reading. Yeah. But for those that are concerned right. about it, that can, you know, that would help alleviate any of their concerns. Now, I, th I think that's good. I mean, the church I'm actually working with now does some of that. And at first I was kind of like, hey, why are you doing all this? But then now I kind of realize, I think it is important for people to know that you're handling, you know, the, the, the church is handling the, the resources correctly. Cause let's face it, Steve, there's been a lot of abuse over the years. Mm -hmm. I mean, there has been a lot of abuse and, uh, it, it's a bummer. It's a drag because it, it really, you know, it really kind of hurts the kingdom of God, so to speak, because when churches screw up and, and do some things, it, it gives everybody a black eye. And, and so, uh, I think, you know, there's a scripture that you've probably heard second Samuel twenty two twenty six. you know, to the faithful show your faithful show your, show yourself faithful to those with integrity, you show integrity. So I think it's, it's, it is, it's not asking a lot to at least have some kind of accountability or at least, you know, if you don't have a big system in place, uh, you know, maybe give somebody a link to, you know, your business manager's email or, or your executive pastor or somebody that's handling some of that. So, you know, if they have questions about it, they can always shoot an email off saying, Hey, just wondering how you guys handle things. I don't right. think it's wrong to do that, but we also know that uh, there are different cultures out there, different church cultures and, some of this is kind of a touchy subject for some, yeah. But uh, I think at least you should you should at least consider what we have to say here. So, uh, just showing responsibility that that's really what we're looking at here. All right. So, point number three, as we try to encourage you to uh, spice up your giving page a little bit so that it can help. So help them with their finances first. I'm really big on this. I, I really am. I, I'm surprised more pastors don't push this or don't make this available, but I really think, you know, we're asking people to give and I don't think it's wrong to ask people to give. I really don't, but there's a lot of families out there. I saw this, especially when I was senior pastor in Kansas and I was in a city called junction city, a little town actually. And it was a military base, Fort Riley's right in that area. So we had a lot of young families come to my church and those poor people, those poor kids, they didn't have a clue how to handle their own money, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, you know, we're trying to, to do something. We're asking people to give, but then I realized, my goodness gracious. I mean, these people are living, you know, sometimes not even week to week. I mean, they're, they're trying to figure out how to make it to, day to day. And some of it has to do with, you know, just not really good understanding of how to handle your money. Mm -hmm. just, well, just, yeah. It's you know, people, I think sometimes take for granted or assume that, Everybody has some good money skills, but uh, not not everyone does. Most people don't, yes. especially this younger group that's coming out today. And and so I would really, you know, here, so here's what I would encourage is, is again, this is all about your giving page. And, and you can't just overload this page with all, all this stuff we're talking about. But maybe, again, put a link on there. Um, if you're, first of all, if your church isn't, trying to at least provide some kind of a resource for people to help them balance their budget or help them spend their money. Try to find something. Uh, Steve, I know you're a big fan of, uh, of what's his name? Dave Ramsey. Dave Ramsey. In okay. Financial Peace University, yes. Okay. 
So Financial Peace University uh, does a pretty good job in helping people balance their budget and understand money. I mean, they have their website. They have some free resources as well as a program that your church can actually be a part of. Yeah, right, right. and sponsor the program and teach the classes yeah. or co-lead the classes. I'm not sure what they call it because it's primarily the video-driven environment. But they're real good classes for equipping people. I have a, a son that just got married, and so a pre-wedding gift was the Financial Peace University for him, he and his oh, wow. fiance at the time to go through. Yeah, so I think it'll get you know the number one um, problem in marriages today are money fights. Really is and true. So yeah. I mean, you want to foster and create some strong families, and if you can get the financial peace under con- or the financial part under control, then yeah. you're oh, going to yeah. have some healthier. <laughs> And there's other other than Dave Ramsey. There's uh, I think Crown Financial mm-hmm. that is that was the fellow years ago who I used to use his material back like 30 years ago, wasn't it? Uh, was that Larry Burkett? Yeah, it was Larry, wasn't it Larry Burkett? Burkett? It may be. He's Maybe. been since passed away. Oh yeah, he's been, he's been dead for a while. But I think it's him. I think that's the ministry he started. I think. But uh, I used his material 30 years ago. And I used to teach it in my church a long time ago. And so, you know, again, you're saying, well, you know, how do I put this on my giving page? Well, again, do a little research. And if you can't find a place, we could help you. We can certainly point you in the right direction. So there are two that we just mentioned there, Crown, Crown as well as uh, Dave Ramsey's thing. But at least point people to a direction where they could maybe get some help. All right. And maybe if you're really ambitious enough, consider teaching one of those classes. Yeah, and exactly. Church. And as you said, you've have you sponsored one? Didn't you? Did you I was co. Else? I co-led one with okay. uh, yeah. with Jason. Yeah, so. I know Jason. So, uh, so again, it's not that hard to do. You could put something together, and and you know, my my f- philosophy is that if people can get their own house in order, then they will give. But a lot of times, people won't give because they're like, "Well, I don't have any money," you know. And, and sometimes they don't have the money because they're busy spending it on, in places maybe they shouldn't be spending it. And so they're, they're, you know, their pockets are empty. And, and then we put a guilt trip on people, not, not everybody, but there are some churches, you know, we put a guilt people on them, guilt trip on them. They go, well, you should be giving, you know. Well, I, if, you can't, if you can't handle your own resources, how are you going to help other people? How are you going to help the church? So... I would really, I, I really strongly emphasize that. I think it's good to help people get their house in order. I think giving will go up when they do that. Right. I think another way I look at this is there's, from the giving standpoint, you know, giving is a is an act of worship, and it's also a sign of good stewardship. So you're just a manager of your money. So right. what you want to put your giving page together so that you can get people to the point where they recognize that. You know, this is a this is a form of worship. You know, I want to worship with something that's very close to me, which is my you know, wallet with mm-hmm. a lot of people. And I also want to show some maturity in how I'm managing my finances. So and God has a formula that he, he wants the first fruits. Mm-hmm. And so I think uh, if you can begin to teach that in people, then it's going to make their lives better, going to ease their uh, financial woes and um, allow them to give. So get to a point where they're, you know, where they mm-hmm. can give. Yeah. But I think it's, I think it's hand in hand, Steve. I, I mean, I think, yeah, I do think you got to put God first in your finances. But again, if you can't handle your finances, you know, you're, you're asking people to give. And yet what if they've got bills? What if they got, see, here's where I'm at on this thing. I, I, and I know some pastors that teach this and there may be some people listening to us right now that teach us. Uh, I'm sorry if, if you disagree with me, but I don't think, I don't necessarily think it's magical. There's this idea that if you just give God 10%, magic's going to happen in your finances and you're not going to have any more problems. And, and they quote scriptures about, you know, the thief mm-hmm. and all that stuff. And, and I, I, I understand where that's coming from, but if, if you're giving 10% and yet you're, you're just not able to handle your money appropriately at home. If you're not able to take the other 90% and handle it right, it's a mess. Yeah. It's just a big mess. And honestly, people will give up and quit. They'll quit giving. And so in, in my opinion, it's got to be both. It's got to be both hand in hand. It's, it's, 
you know, put God first, but also make sure you have your finances in order. And for some people, it's a real challenge for them to do that. They, they don't understand that you don't have to go buy a bunch of stuff at Circle K every day or, yeah. or you know, go out to eat fast food every day. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I, I don't have the stats, Andy, but I mean, America is a country that consumes more than it earns. Oh, absolutely. So there's that. It's just part of the culture that people are, you know, I find that what the average – uh, American credit card debt is like ten thousand dollars. It's ridiculous. Yeah, yeah, it's it's, just- it's ridiculous. It's 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 insane. And and again, it's 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 systematic of our society. So this whole thing of the just magically giving that it's all that's going to disappear. It I don't believe in that personally. I do believe that if you give and if you practice responsibility in your household, your own finances, and with your family, then yes, I do believe it opens the doors up for blessings and. You will prosper, right. but but I, I think that it's just if you're just looking at one side of the coin, we'll just give give give, and everything else is out of order. It's chaos. I mean, come on, it's just God, God's not going to magically fix something right. if you're not willing to take some responsibility. That's my take on it, and uh, you know I know there are some people that don't emphasize that one part, but yeah, I'm do uh, it anyhow. So, I agree. Yeah. All right, so. Uh, Strongly consider this stuff. And again, you know, we're not saying that you throw all this stuff on your giving page, but maybe some pictures, some graphics, maybe a testimony or two. And then some of these other things we just mentioned, you could put links to say, hey, if you're, you know, if you're interested in in how to get a handle on your own finances, you know, click on this link. Or or maybe you've got somebody in your church that's an elder or a leader or deacon or something that. That is good right. with money and would be willing to help a family, you know, learn right. responsibility. So, you know, give them resources to these other things we're talking about. Right. So you're, you're basically you're setting a tone for uh, the giving as opposed to just having a giving button there. Right. But you're saying, you know, this is how we're reaching the community. This is how we can reach you and help you. And this, you know, you feel confident that you're giving to a good cause because the money's going to be managed wisely right. and go to a good um, you know, to a good end result. Yeah. So those are some of the three tenets. You kind of create that atmosphere yeah. around your giving page, and uh, yeah. it'll be successful all around. You'll be helping people mm-hmm. as well as you know your ministry yeah. growing. And, and honestly, when you're putting your page together or you're revamping your page, I would kind of see it from try to get a perspective of somebody that's maybe not a church person necessarily. You know, get some maybe even ask some different set of eyes to look at it. Mm-hmm. And, and maybe kind of do kind of a, in, in some ways, a constructive criticism. You know, let's look at this thing in a, in a, in, in a, in a cynical way, not to be downplaying it or be mean, but just, okay, if I'm coming to this page and, and I don't know the church very well, you know, what's the impression it gives right. me? Right. There's, you know? I had a, a, um, actually my wife's, uh, roommate before we got married, uh, we took her to church and, um, she was, Grew up in a Christian family, and we're like, and after the service, we said, "So, what do you think? You know, how was how was it? It was actually Chuck Swindoll's church in California. Mm-hmm. So, and Chuck Swindoll can, you know, he had a pretty good message. Mm-hmm. And she came away. She said, "Well, all they asked for was my money. That's all I ever heard." And I was, I had to just kind of look up, going, "I remember one part of the service where they passed the plate, mm-hmm. but." If that's the key message that she took away, it's like all they want is my money, and that's that is a a um, uh, what what is the word a pre con uh, a pre con uh, preconceived a notion idea. that people have is oh I'm not going to church all they want is my money yeah. and then they, if it gets reinforced by oh look yep you know all they have is this giving button online they're not willing to right you know uh, give themselves right then, yeah it can create uh, so you want to create a healthy yeah. atmosphere, attitude around your giving page. Yeah, absolutely. And, and again, there's lots of different people look at your website. There's people visiting your church and you may be surprised. There are people maybe have been coming to your church for years and they're still cynical and uh, they may need some encouragement and point them in the right direction. So anyhow, just some tips here that we think would be helpful to, you know, help, help with your church's giving page. And I think if you do some of these things in a tasteful way, I think you will see some, you'll see better results. And um, I think it would be a healthy thing to do. So uh, that about that's about wraps it up for us. You know what? Check out our Church Solutions podcast on iTunes. Uh, we've put this on different 
places. We've, we're actually on YouTube, the audio only on YouTube. We're on iTunes. Give us a review. Check it out. Look for Church Solutions uh, podcast and give us some feedback. Yeah. Give us some a review. Uh, we're on uh, – where, where are we at? We usually have the link – on new media ministries TV. Right. And if you like the program, tell a friend and yeah, get them absolutely. listening as well. Yeah. We, I think we've got a link to our podcast also under streaming church TV. If you go to the resource link, you'll see some resources. And one of those is our podcast. So we'd love to hear from you. We'd love, you know, if, Hey, if you think we're out the lunch on this thing, we'd love to get your feedback. You know, maybe you think we're nuts talking about this and, or maybe you've got some suggestions. Mm -hmm. uh, we'd love to get some feedback on that. And as you know, we do tech related stuff as well. So, uh, we do streaming video, we do mobile apps and we do websites. So check us out. So, all right, Steve. So, um, I'm going to get out of your office here pretty soon because your cat, <laughs> your, your wife's cat, <laughs> you're blaming it on your wife. Uh, your wife's cat is making me, uh, making my eyes itch. But, uh, so I, I will be, you'll be leaving soon folks. Thank you so much for spending some time with us today. We, we sure appreciate it. My name is Phil Thompson and I'm Steve Lacey and you guys have a great day. We love you and we appreciate you listening and we'll catch you next time on another edition of church solutions podcast. <laughs>